Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Tuesday the 31st of January and I hope you're well. I can't quite believe it's the end of January, um, but I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of the day's Bible readings uh, and a reflection on that reading. On a Tuesday, the theme for our prayers is incarnation. And so we pray. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, yet born of the Virgin Mary. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Holy God, holy and mighty one, holy and strong one, abide in us. Holy God, holy and incarnate one, holy and indwelling one, abide in us. Holy God, holy and life-giving one, holy and guiding one, abide in us. And the psalm today is Psalm 121. My help comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth for evermore. My help comes from the Lord. And so we turn to our Bible reading. And once again, um, we're reading from 1 Corinthians from St Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth and we've reached a very famous passage that passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 1 Corinthians chapter 13 if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part will disappear. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these is love. <clears throat> that famous, famous passage. Uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So let me read a reflection for us for today, written by Bishop Helen Ann Hartley. And she says this, It may come as a disappointment to selectors of suitable readings for marriage services that the kind of love Paul is talking about here isn't romantic love. The Greek word used here, agape, is a reason for acting that we can't choose or ignore. It requires effort and commitment. Whilst this is obviously appropriate for intimate relationships, it has an important and lasting wider meaning that Paul wants to convey as vital for the Corinthian community. Indeed, when it comes down to it, love may be the answer to all of the problems that community was facing, if only they could see it that way. Yet again, Paul's work sounds remarkably contemporary. A few years ago, following the terrorist attack against the Muslim community in Christchurch, New Zealand, I took part in an interfaith vigil outside Bradford City Hall. Drawing upon a Maori tradition of singing a brief song to support a theme under discussion, I sang these words of Paul and invited others to join in or hum along. 
I sang these words of, uh, as our voices resonated in that public space. There was a strong sense of connection and of God's love binding us together in our diversity. It was a powerful reminder to me of the call to seek unity in all that we do for the sake of building up our common life. And indeed, I, I've always thought that about Paul's letter. He's saying that love is the answer. Love is the way to resolve their conflicts in Corinth. That kind of love that we're talking about in that passage. Um, to, to work together to seek the common good. And so we turn to prayer and we begin with the collect for this week. God of heaven, you send the gospel to the ends of the earth and your messengers to every nation. Send your Holy Spirit to transform us by the good news of everlasting life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue praying that the coming of Christ may disperse all darkness, that the birth of Christ may hallow all life, that the love of Christ may be in every heart. Lord, have mercy. That the peace of Christ may fill the world, that the descent of Christ may uplift all peoples, that the humility of Christ may teach us gentleness. Christ, have mercy. That the presence of Christ may be within us, that the power of Christ may be upon us, that the spirit of Christ may fill us. Lord, have mercy. God of life, God of a child's questions about God, let us take comfort in the fact that we do not have all the answers. Allow our lack of knowledge and our dependence on faith reassure us. If we could understand it all, it wouldn't be worth knowing. If we could contain all that is, there would be less room for hope and no room for curiosity. And it's through the curious questions that we grow and find your life. Amen. And so we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, born into a human family, may we know you in our homes. Bless our families and friends, our neighbours and all your people. Grant that we may rejoice that you are made flesh and dwell among us. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father who has shown his love for us be with us. May the Son who's come to be among us be with us. May the Spirit who fills the whole world be with us. The Holy Three be within and without us now and evermore. Amen. So thank you for joining me for prayer today and I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you hopefully tomorrow back here at 9.45. Until then, take care. God bless. Bye for now.